Look around and you will find it. Used for everything from jet planes to cans, aluminum, light and strong, has earned its reputation as the wonder metal of the century. Aluminum, so widely used today, and the world's most abundant metallic element, does not occur in a natural state. The most available source of aluminum is actually bauxite. Bauxite is mainly mined in tropical countries and carried by boat to the Quebec port of La Bay. The aluminum atom in bauxite is bonded to oxygen molecules. These bonds have to be broken by electrolysis to produce pure aluminum. Bauxite is carried by rail to the plant where it will be crushed. Then, through a chemical transformation called the Bayer process, alumina is extracted. This is then roasted in calciners to eliminate all moisture. This is alumina. It is transported by rail to the reduction facility. This plant has 432 pots in which a powerful electric current will be passed to produce electrolysis. An overhead crane dumps alumina into the pots. Then the electric current from the anode placed in the alumina passes through the alumina which we see here right at the bottom of the pot. Via the process of reduction of the alumina at 950 degrees centigrade, the anodes lose volume and will have to be replaced. It's a continuous operation. Each anode has a lifespan of about 20 days. Spent anodes are recovered from the pot with this overhead crane and carried off to be recycled. They clean the aluminum rods, which will then be reused. Here we see the crust formed atop the anode. When the anodes are replaced, the accumulated impurities have to be recovered from the top of the pots. This is accomplished with these pincers. Then a new anode is inserted into the alumina and electrolysis continues. The electric current breaks the molecular bonds. The heavier aluminum collects at the bottom of the pot while the oxygen bound to fluorine is released as a gas which is drawn off and treated. The liquefied aluminum remains at the bottom of the pot. It has to be recovered in this huge crucible with a tube. The tube is dipped into the bottom of the pot and a vacuum system draws the molten aluminum from the crucible. The aluminum is recovered in a short time. Air is vacuumed from the crucible by a flexible pipe held by an operator. The tube is finally withdrawn and the overhead crane dumps another quantity of alumina into the pot. Thus, the aluminum fabrication process continues uninterrupted. The crucibles filled with molten aluminum are transported to the casting house. Their contents are poured into holding furnaces which have a capacity of 60 tons. In these very hot furnaces, the molten aluminum is stored to await casting. Finally, casting begins. The aluminum is either semi-continuously vertically cast, producing ingots, sheets, or billets, or directly cast into semi-finished products. The cooling of aluminum pieces is accelerated by water sprays. The large rectangular ingots, which can weigh up to 25 tons, will head for hot rolling, eventually leading to fabrication of products such as aluminum foil. From four to five tons of bauxite have produced two tons of alumina, which in turn produces one ton of alumina. This particular plant produces 200,000 tons of aluminum annually, yet some other facilities can turn out as much as 400,000 tons.